The Democratic race has been this giant field, most of whom have no chance whatsoever. And now there's impeachment and Rudy Giuliani and people getting arrested at airports. And you've run these campaigns and you have two on the other side. Are you not sort of freaking out about the ability of your candidate who might have had a chance to get hot at the end? How's he gonna get hot in this environment when everybody's just focused incessantly yeah. and obsessively yeah. on Donald Trump? If you have an external event that's really powerful yeah. and people are paying attention to it, it will redefine the race. There is no question about it. That's well, the history. We have the external event. We have the one external ongoing. external event is Donald Trump. And there's only one issue, and it's Donald Trump and how to get rid of him. And so you have to be, I'm the person, I'm the woman, I'm the man who can take this man on and beat him. But the problem with the field as a whole, no one has a message that you can write on the back of your hand or in yeah. your notebook or whatever. They don't, none of them have that. The Elizabeth Warren's had the most success. I have a plan. Senator Booker's trying to do values. It's almost Carter-esque in the way he- Revival of civic grace. Yeah. Who are they against? In one sentence, what the hell happens the day after they get elected? What's, What's their more, thing? Yeah. What's their lightning bolt? Joe Biden is also, I think, in desperate times. Yeah. It would feel like desperate measures to me as he doesn't seem to know what the hell to do about a situation where he's the only Democrat who's part of the biggest story in American politics right now. Right, right, exactly. He's That's part of it every day. Biden had an opportunity to say, all right, the war is on, because he was in the Ukraine thing, in the debate with Trump, but he couldn't execute that I'm the winning fighter, which I agree is what they're looking for. He started Did doing that in the last speech. couple of days. He has started to do that. How do you think he's couple. doing? Yeah, I agree with Rob. He, he got there the other than yesterday, I guess it was, and he was really articulating yeah. a very strong, forceful position, and he did a good job of doing it. Who do you look at when you look at the rest of the field and say, there's somebody we I've always thought to. Corey, if he gets yeah. a spark, could run with it, but they're not buying it yet. But I think he has a little time. I think Corey and Mayor Pete, and Mayor Pete, if Biden is broken, even third in Iowa, New Hampshire, we got those independent yuppies with nothing to do on the Republican side. <laughs> there's a moment there for him. Do you smell desperation as you look at these candidates? Do you smell it in the well, air well, with, I, the, with the Democrats? Yes. They all make the same mistake, and it happens on the Republican side, too. They, you know, a year ago, they had the meeting, I'm running. And so I got to get to Iowa first. So they all go blow a bunch of money in the first half of the year thinking it's an edge. But since they all do it, no edge. And then they all go broke at the end unless they can move polling. Is desperation a thing that Trump feels? Oh, I think does so. he get desperate? Oh, yes. Oh, he does. Trump gets desperate? His whole life, he's gotten away with stuff. Yeah. And yeah. he keeps, he's thinking, I'm going to get away with this. And yeah. at a certain point, he's going to have to pay the piper. You're right. He'll dig himself in. The smart move for Trump would be, all right, fine. I want to vote in 30 days, House. Yes, Mitch, I want to vote two weeks after that, up or down. And then he'll say, I'm vindicated on Christmas. I was cleared in the trial. And he, <laughs> he can restart and go. Instead, he's going to stretch this damn thing all the way out to March. Yep.